Hi everyone, I'm Jennifer and I'll be speaking for our group today. And so I collaborated with Brandy, Kenzie, Miu, Rena, Serena, and Steph in this Affirming Diversity project. And actually Kenzie came up with this idea of the cultural recipe book. And we'll talk more about it. So the driving questions here are how can we learn more about our students' cultural backgrounds? And how can our students learn more about one another's cultural backgrounds with this cultural recipe book? And so the CRT principle we'll be focusing on is learning within the context of culture. So you may be asking, how does this look like in the classroom? So the goals for us as teachers with this project is to promote cultural development and respect among students, to also promote appreciation for, of the students' ethnic backgrounds and to celebrate the cultures. So for example, as a teacher, we're going to be asking our students to bring in a recipe from their culture or has cultural significance to them. And that could be a very important step for some of these students to engage more within their culture and develop more respect for their own culture. And then once they get the recipe book, they're able to build respect for other students by reading through it, being able to read stories about it, and, um, you know, reading the different recipes and ingredients that may be unique to that culture. Also, they'll be able to read and maybe even make one of these recipes, and they'll be able to grow a much bigger appreciation for that ethnic background. And the goal for the students is to gain an appreciation for their own background and to learn about cultural backgrounds of other people as well. And it also helps students gain more information about historical perspectives of various cultures as well. So for example, if a student does, isn't, doesn't know much about their cultural background, though they might be able to ask their grandma, grandpa, auntie, uncle kind of thing, and can ask them, oh, what dish do we, like, what, how do you make this dish that we always eat on New Year's kind of thing? Or what kind of dish is this that you make all the time that is really good, but I have no idea what it is kind of thing? Or um, they could also, they could engage in the conversation with people that make this kind of thing that is special to their culture and learn more about it and why they eat it during the holiday or maybe what the importance of, is of an ingredient or they can learn so much from just engaging in a conversation with the, their family, right, about a recipe. And also for the student to be able to bring that into the classroom and feel safe with sharing that sort of story with us would be amazing, right? That is our main goal as teachers is to create a safe environment for our students to be able to share something personal about their family and culture in our classroom, right? So our recipe book is what I will show you now. So this is our beautiful, beautiful recipe book. <laughs> And yeah, so this is our recipe book and I'll show you. So this is the dedication page. There's, this recipe book is dedicated to each of our unique cultural backgrounds. We can use this recipe book to learn and appreciate our friends and family's culture. So this is an index. As you can see, we have a lot of different recipes. So um, each of our group members were able to bring in a recipe of their own and a recipe of their own students if they're in the classroom or something like most of us are in field so we have um, MLLs in our classroom so we were able to ask them for recipes so for example I'm gonna click on this one the Chinese Niang Gao 
which is a gluttonous rice cake kind of thing that um, is actually really yummy, and I really like it. You can kind of see it's this kind of brown color, and they always wrap it in this red paper. It's very yummy, but so, so um, something you might notice about the ingredient list is that kansi, which is right here, is a special ingredient that you use for it, which in English, you may have no idea what that means, right? Um, so that's why we bolded them. And at the very end of the cookbook, you can look at it and you'll find like an, ex what is it called? Like an, en not an encyclopedia, an index or a glossary of what kind of words, this, what of ingredients that are kind of special towards a certain culture. So they're able, so you're able to refer back to that in case you're confused. We also added within this, so there's a picture, there's ingredients and preparation. Um, also, if they got it from a student, they may have asked the student to write it in their native language, which is also a very culturally responsive way to engage with your students and their home life is to ask them to write in their native language. So I believe this student, um, or I mean, I believe this person got their student to write in their native language. And then I think she translated it herself, not the student, like, I think they translated it herself um, to English. So from the slide before. So yeah. Again, here's the <laughs> recipe in Chinese. And we also added another page that um, kind of gives more personal context to the recipe. So for example, it says here that this recipe has been passed down many generations for this student. And it gives a little context about his family. So they immigrated to the United States from China before he was born and gives a language background as well, speaks Chinese and English fluently, and gives some cultural background about this recipe. And so it explains that they eat this and make this during Lunar New Year to celebrate. And in Chinese culture itself, New Year's is a very important time. So Lunar New Year is a very important time. So they eat certain foods during this time to bring in good luck. So this specific food, yang gao, um, is known to signify that the next year will be better and higher than the past year. Yeah, and so um, I'll share one more. This one is from my family. I will share about my students, this isn't from my family, I'm sorry, I mean from my students' um, interview I did. So this is, sorry, this is Kon. It is one of my Micronesian students um, actually shared this with me. It's a very simple recipe. All you need is breadfruit and coconut milk. And she told me all this in English. <laughs> and I thought it was very simple, but it, was really cute what she told me. She told me that, so she's from Chuk, and I'm not sure if the people from Arizona know too much about Micronesia, um, but I'll give a little bit of context. So this is what Micronesia looks like. And so Chuk is one of the islands in Micronesia, and there are a lot of Micronesians that immigrate to, or technically migrate to, um, to Hawaii and go to school here. So this student lived in Chuk for five years and was homeschooled there, but then came here. And then before the, um, before the pandemic moved back, after, like last, last December, moved back here. So she's been back and forth, but she shares with me that this treat is just pounded breadfruit and then they soak it in coconut milk. And it's very simple, but it reminds her of home. And she told me how it brings her like joy whenever she eats it. And so she just told me that 
it remind I mean it is eaten on special occasions, which she didn't tell me what the special occasion was. Or it's like a sweet treat. So I wanted to share that with you because that I was very happy to hear that from my student. Um and so at the very end of our cookbook, you'll find this ingredient encyclopedia that I mentioned before. So any highlighted, I mean bolded words, we kind of um, added more context to what it is. So for example, the kanzi, the for the right, gluttonous rice cake, it's like um, a mixture of potassium carbonate and sodium bicarbonate, which is hard for us as English first language speakers to understand what it is, but it's used in a lot of different um, Asian dishes. So yeah, anyways, uh, we'll link this whole cookbook and I hope you guys can uh, find something new, find a new recipe to use. Yeah, so you could just click on any of these links like this and then it'll take you straight to it, right? Okay, thank you guys.